So what is modern Christianity doing about the rise in atheism in America and Europe? My initial response was basically nothing, uh, <laughs> but I thought more about it. Christianity and religion in general continues to decline in America and Europe. It's safe to say that Christendom, which is Christianity embedded in culture and government, is no longer. There have been a variety of different responses to this. The first is to try to make Christianity, quote, relevant by making it more similar to modern Western culture. This can be as simple as making the worship music sound like modern music, but it's always going to be worse and, and pretty cringy most of the time. Yes. However, many go further by changing or relaxing their morals to match our culture. You can just look at the many Protestant denominations that have given in to liberalism by supporting same-sex marriage. It's many of them if you haven't heard the ironically named United Methodist Church is splitting up over the topic. <laughs> so united. Yeah. One of them is going to be the United Methodist Church. I don't know what the other one's going to be, but it, it was about a half and half vote and they're splitting in half and I they're allowing same-sex married pastors to lead the churches and the liberal half wow. and a lot of other things that would be appalling even to Christians 50 or 100 years ago. Oh, and yeah. Even many within the Catholic Church want the church to change its teaching in this manner to be more quote, pastoral. So you can take a look at the Pew survey we mentioned earlier for statistics on the Christian laity's views on religious and social issues. Let me just say, it for the most part, excluding evangelicals, there is not much difference between the laity in these different Christian denominations and society at large. Really? So yeah. they, are not, they are no more conservative than people at large? If any, it's marginal, like a few percent yeah. different. And it was funny, I was looking in the Catholic section, and it was like 5 or 10% of people who call themselves Catholics don't believe in God. I was just so <laughs> confused. <laughs> they straight up don't believe. It wasn't like, I don't know. I don't know it was like another 10 or 15%. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I don't quite understand that. Now, we can say it's clear that a, a large portion of the Christians have what you would say mainstream opinions. Yeah. You couldn't even, unless you asked them what their religion was, you, have no, you would have no clue what religion they were. You would just assume they, they don't go to church or anything. Now, the second response is to double down on traditional or conservative religious beliefs. This is arguably the reason for the evangelical Protestant movement, which since that the mainstream Protestant denominations were becoming more liberal and institutional, evangelicals tend to be conservative in both the political and religious sense, and they take a re reactionary stance towards culture and science. Additionally, the traditionalist movement within Catholicism seeks to return the Catholic Church to how it was before the Second Vatican Council, which ended in 1965. The epitome of this is the traditional Latin Mass, or the TLM, which was the liturgy in the Latin Rite from the Council of Trent, 1563, to the end of the Second Vatican Council in 1965, so over 400 years. Wow. While the Latin Mass is rare in, you know, post-Vatican II land, uh, its popularity is growing. And it was basically, quote, legalized by Pope Benedict XVI in maybe 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, but the Eastern Orthodox churches are not changing much. They've pretty much stayed the same, still got the beards, you know. Although the Russians might say that the Greeks are too liberal. Well, I think that's always been the case. The, uh, the, the Greeks have been a little bit, I don't know, they've kind of always been progressive, it seems. You I know, like in antiquity, they, they were kind of on the forefront of some things. I, I don't think it's always been true with, within the Orthodox Church. Oh, yeah, Greece. within that. Yeah, yeah, maybe not. So the third response is the Benedict Option, which I mentioned in past episodes. Uh, this comes from the conclusion that society is so corrupt that good Christians must retreat to isolated communities in order to fully live out their faith. It is based on St. Benedict of Nursia, who lived right after the fall of the uh, Western Roman Empire. He's the father of modern monasticism, and he wrote a rule about how the monks had to live. Many argue that monasteries are the reason ancient knowledge survived after the fall of Western Roman Empire. That's probably very true. Yeah, because they were the only ones bothering to write all this stuff down, and they weren't married, so they just worked and like wrote stuff down and prayed. Made wine, well, right? Yeah, they were, well, they invented many types of beer and cheese mm -hmm. and other things, because they had to be self-sustaining. They'd have to make their own thing, and they made themselves stand out by making new products and quality products. That was how they stayed afloat. It kind of led to their demise in many cases, too. They would just be, like, very spoiled and rich. I guess so, yeah. because yeah. they just got so good at what they were doing, and they didn't have to raise a family or anything. So it's just like a bunch of bachelors getting together. and Hanging out and making moolah. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. That uh, just brought some uh, and a very interesting question to my mind. So after the fall of the Roman Empire, there were people who said, oh, man, this, this thing's going to go on forever. 
ain't never going to fall. And then all of a sudden, uh, due to many, many reasons, uh, the Western Roman Empire fell and was completely ransacked, destroyed. These guys, they had already done the Benedict Option thing. They were out there and they were able to preserve a lot of this knowledge. Do you think that something like that will happen in America? Do you think that there there are people who say that oh, America will never collapse? It's it's great. It'll always be here, whatever. But if it were to collapse, will there be people similar to those guys who will preserve knowledge? It would have to be really bad for this to become prevalent enough to notice. There are like Catholic communes around the country, but they're pretty rare and sparse. Mm, I was just thinking about that. I guess when Rome fell, they were so advanced and everyone else around them was not nearly as advanced. And so I guess there was a lot of knowledge that could very easily be lost. And even if America were to collapse, so to speak, or, or have a big war or something, the internet would still exist. And so there would still be knowledge out there. And so it's not like these guys will be pockets of civilization in a completely barren wasteland. Like there will still be other countries who have science and, and history and things like that. I guess it's not quite the same in the modern world, but it's just interesting to think about what, what traditions will be preserved by those type of people when inevitably something bad happens, which it will. I mean, every society collapses. Episode one, go and watch that. Anacyclosis, if you haven't already watched it. Um, So which of these options do you think would be successful in reviving religion? Let's see. We have the Benedict option. We have uh, the relevant option. That's number one. Double down on traditional conservative religious beliefs, or you said double uh, become more relevant. Yeah. Well, if they keep making that cringy Christian music, That's not going to win anyone over. So I don't think that one's going to work. And you end up just sacrificing your values to the mob, the ever-changing mainstream. Yeah, the mainstream is is kind of always changing. And so if you keep trying to keep up with it, you're going to become just as bad. And and it'll end up that that you don't support anything. You don't stand for anything. So that's not an option. Option one is not going to work. In my opinion, number two is a better option, but still doubling down on traditional religious beliefs will be tough. You will face a lot of backlash. People have to go into that if they decide to do that, knowing that they will be cut off from people and society at large in a lot of ways. And it may be in ways that we can't even really think about right now. But consider that often referenced episode of Black Mirror, that sci-fi show where it's like the social credit system. And unless you do what everybody else is doing and you act happy and you, you do all the right things, you get a rating. And if people think that you're like an outsider, they'll downgrade you and you don't have access to services. And so that's kind of where we're headed. And if these people want to make a stand on traditionalism, there there are going to be big consequences. I mean, economic consequences. They could be personal financial consequences. And there could be consequences we can't even imagine right now, but they will be bad. So that's going to be a tough one. But if that happens, that kind of automatically leads into the third solution, I think. When these people are isolated and just like pushed out of society, they basically force them into the Benedict option anyway. So I think that's the ultimate option there. Not necessarily the best, but it's what's going to happen. Do you think that the traditional uh, method number two is, it it would um, attract people who are outside of it in that it's different from the culture? Do you think people who are just fed up with the culture will like things that are so different? Like you've, you've never been to a Latin mass, but it is completely different from everything you've ever done. It's completely different from any Protestant service you've ever been to. People might just go to that and be like, wow, this is so different. I won't differ, you know? They do you, will. Do you think that's there's any case for that? It might be a small number of people, but that shouldn't stop us from trying it. Um, I think, yeah. I think there will always be people who will get fed up with with how terrible modern society is. It's getting worse every day, modern culture. And I think, yeah, there is a, at the end of the day, the defining characteristic of mankind is a a desire to have order. Anybody who can bring order to the chaos, and believe me, there's chaos on the way. You look at the streets of Seattle, streets of Portland, there's chaos out there and people want order. And so if if a religion like Christianity, like Catholicism can provide that, there will be people who will go to that. They want stability. They want order. They want to have a means of providing for their family. Whatever option can provide them that, that's what they'll go for. Thanks for listening to the Sons of Antiquity Highlight Reel. To hear this clip in context and to enjoy our full-length episodes, check out the links in the description or search Sons of Antiquity on YouTube, BitChute, Spotify, or Apple and Google Podcasts.